Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our channel and in this video, I'm going to talk about Microsoft Zero Trust Security for Identities. Now, in the last video, we have already discussed that what is Microsoft Zero Trust Security Principle or Strategies, but there are certain aspects which I would like to highlight before we go ahead and talk about identity respectively and these aspects are how these principles are going to work for you or for your enterprise right so if i talk about principles there are three of them which we have already discussed in our last video the first one is verifying explicitly each and every digital state in terms of each and every request that is coming to access a kind of a resource right then you have a zoom breach and least privilege right but the fact is that these are guidelines or these are principles which are already defined which you have to adhere but in a nutshell you will be mapping these principles with the guidelines or policies which you have for your enterprise now both of these getting combined you have to implement them right and for implementation you need a typical service or a typical feature or a typical technology and when you combine these three different aspects likewise the principle of zero trust security guidelines and policies of your own enterprise and then choosing the right technology or the right service to implement a specific use case that's what microsoft zero trust security and this concept remains same for all the six digital states okay so this is the kind of layout that we are going to use for all the other digital states as well so basically i will be discussing all the use cases or all the security implementation for these six digital states which fall under the category of zero trust and then we'll talk about which product you should use and how you can implement a specific feature altogether okay so let's start from identity right if we talk about identity and if we talk about the process of onboarding the user itself okay this is something which happens in every enterprise that majorly the process gets started from onboarding the user to a hr system from there the user object gets created in active directory and then in most of the enterprises you will have multiple identity providers that can use this identity to perform their own task right now the reason behind having multiple identity providers because your organization may have different kind of applications which have their own limitations right now when i say limitation i'm specifically targeting that how an application is communicating with the identity provider so if i talk about some of the legacy applications which are obviously there in most of the enterprises i'm talking about large enterprises right and these applications are still working on ws trust right to get the authentication done with the active directory but in the same enterprises you also have applications which are matured enough to understand modern authentication and then there are certain applications which have their own native credential flow that what do i mean by this that they are maintaining identities on their own now this is the one which should no longer exist but it is still there in many of the enterprises right but if we talk about the issue or if we talk about the challenge if we talk about the insights that are going to compromise your security think about like this all these identity providers are performing certain tasks right likewise getting the user authenticated now on behalf of each and every request which these identity providers are receiving processing and sending response there will be a lot more data which they are collecting right now let me make it relatable think about a use case wherein one of my user account got compromised for one of my application contacting one of my identity provider right now the insights regarding this compromise will be available in the data intelligence which is processed by identity provider one but that will not be available to rest of the identity providers right so as a user if i'm trying to sign in app one that is contacting identity provider and my account is compromised it's logically a user anomaly but until and unless your solutions are sharing intelligence, this is something which cannot be highlighted, right? The attacker can again try to compromise the access which I have 
from other identity providers, right? It will not be flagged to other identity providers that one of the access has been compromised and everything should be blocked, right? Now think about the same use case if you have only one master identity provider or a single identity provider. Now I know practically it's not possible, but Wherever possible, try to migrate all your application to one single identity provider. Take an example of Azure Active Directory. Think about like this. If any particular user account is compromised, okay, all the access for rest of the applications will be blocked because with the help of Azure AD identity protection, you can have conditional access policies in place or you can have user risk policies in place wherein once a user account is being flagged as a risky user all the access will be blocked right so step number one from a microsoft zero trust security strategy perspective if possible don't have multiple identity and access management solutions because the intelligence is not shared and it is going to impact the overall security posture of your enterprise Right. The next use case that I want to discuss is the most important one, and that is the applications which are using legacy authentication. I mean, I seriously want to ask this question that why you have applications which are still using legacy authentication, wherein there are so many CVEs available, which just list down how vulnerable an application can be. See, think about this very practically. Likewise, you are doing your task, I'm doing my task, attacker has to execute his own tasks, right? He is not going to compromise something which is already secured. If you have applications which have MFA or which have secure channel, the attacker or adversary is not going to invest time in compromising that provided he or she already has an application that can be compromised very easily right so if there are any application which are still using legacy authentication in your enterprise be it any reason try to migrate them to a solution with which modern authentication strategies can be used right because this is the most vulnerable state okay if you have azure ad make sure you get these application published with azure ad application proxy so that you can actually introduce conditional access or mfa right and again all these insights that you are getting irrespective of the application type they are all relatable it's one single entity that's managing the entire telemetry right and that's the azure ad itself okay so the second recommendation would be apart from not using multiple identity provider make sure you get all the applications published through azure ad application proxy which are working on legacy protocols or get the application authentication method change itself. That means instead of that application contacting Active Directory, have uh, ADAL or MCL libraries implemented in your application so that you can get the authentication done directly from Azure AD. And make sure, irrespective of whichever user is logging in your application, make sure there is a concept of second factor authentication. There has to be an MFA on every access that's happening for any application by any user okay the next thing that i would like to talk about is conditional access itself right if you're talking about mfa if you're talking about app state if you're talking about authentication methods conditional access should be rolled out org wide and if you have azure ad identity protection make sure you have created the policies like user risk or session risk policy with the help of azure ad identity protection as well now the reason behind implementing these kind of policies is because these policies work in a real time right so let's say as of now i'm logged in from a specific location and at the same time my user account is being used to establish another session from a location which falls under the scope of a typical time travel right the access will be blocked so if you already have these licenses if you already have these capabilities in your tenant get them implemented without fail this is actually going to improve the overall security posture and it's not only about the identity and access management what i'm trying to explain here that it's not about the things that you have secured it's always about one single blind spot that can act as a threat vector and just keep this statement with you and try to figure out what are the blind spots that you can fix as soon as possible okay the next
The next thing that I would like to talk about, this is very generic. These concepts are not new, but they already exist and you have to implement them. If they are not implemented in your enterprise or in your organization, make sure for every elevated role which a user has, you have role-based access control implemented org-wide. If possible, you can design your own custom roles, right? Preventing any unauthorized access for any particular role is in a nutshell going to improve your security. Also make sure that for every role which has privileged access or elevated access, you have privileged identity management in place. So that for those time frame wherein a user is not supposed to make any changes, he or she should not be able to request that particular access. Also, this is something which is going to help you in a state of compromise as well. And I'll explain you how that let's say my account got compromised and the attacker is trying to elevate a specific role. Now, what if there is a workflow model which is already introduced, right? There is a specific approver who can be notified that this particular account has been compromised or they can be a workflow of second factor authentication even for a role elevation, right? So it's it just means that how you can combine all these different aspects to keep on improving the security layer, right? And the state that we are talking about as of now is typically the identity itself, okay? The next thing is Azure AD password protection. Now, this is a very common behavior which exists in every enterprise and that is users use weak password. Some of them would be the organization name, department name or locations, right? So depending upon your organization, make sure you have a custom band password list, which is implemented in your enterprise so that the users cannot set weak password, right? As of now, we were just talking about provisioning. We were talking about identity lifecycle management. Make sure you have access reviews in place as well. Now, this is something which can be implemented with identity governance, wherein you are actually going to monitor every role change of a user. And whenever a role is not required for that particular user, it can be approved by someone who is a part of the workflow or the user him or herself. Okay, now there is something which I literally want to highlight in red and that is make sure that there is no application which is using native credentials, right? SSO has to be there, right? You cannot trust any application, be it in-house, be it vendor or be it any cloud native solution as well. Everything has to come to a central repository because then only you'll have an efficient telemetry that can help you improve the security. Right. The next thing that I would like to talk about is more about related to the implementation of how the identities are getting synced from on-prem to the cloud. Make sure none of your service accounts are getting synced to Azure Active Directory. Now, this is basically related to Azure AD really Connect itself or on-prem identity management right and wherever possible make sure that the admins have different accounts in terms of managing the resources that exist in on-prem as well as in the cloud now this is basically a situation or a principle of a zoom breach itself because i'm actually segmenting the kind of a scope which is available to an attacker if any identity is getting compromised, right? So let me explain this with an example that let's say my account gets compromised. And in this case, if it is only one single identity, I will be able to make impact or the attacker or the adversary will be able to make an impact to on-prem resources as well as the cloud resources. But if I have different admin accounts, one identity getting compromised is not going to affect the other part or the other entity that is moreover associated with the same user, right? Now there is something which I have not covered yet. So that's the reason why I would like to just briefly cover that. And that is Microsoft Defender for Endpoints and Azure ATP, right? As of now, we are only talking about the cloud implementation or telemetry or sign-in logs or conditional access, right? But there is one more very important aspect and that's how the users are behaving in your on-prem environment likewise what are the activities which are happening in your on-prem environment i'll explain this with an example that let's say one of my account is compromised and i'm a part of uh, let's say it team 
okay and all of a sudden I started accessing the data which is more over related to finance or all of a sudden my account got added to groups which have privileged access right now these are all anomalies right which should not exist on a specific user account and if I talk about Microsoft Defender for endpoints or Azure ATP it's a kind of a solution that can help you understand what is user and entity behavior analytics with a 14 days of learning curve right so you have to implement the solution for your on-prem environments and then there's a learning curve of around 14 days wherein it defined its own understanding of how and which resources a user should access and then if there is any anomaly detected the respective set of admins are notified so make sure you have implemented this as well for securing your on-prem identities now as I've said before that when we talk about Microsoft everything is connected right so if there is any alert that has been triggered for a specific user account from Azure ADP or Microsoft Defender for identity and for the same user there is an anomaly that has been detected in Office 365 or on any endpoint all these alerts will be combined into one single incident which you have to manage okay so think about this very uh, precisely that any solution that exists in your enterprise how interoperable that solution is with other security solutions right when we talk about Microsoft anything which is processed by Microsoft is already available to be shared over and above if you have any other solution which is generating threat intelligence from a security perspective that kind of intelligence can also be injected to Microsoft okay so this is a typical anatomy of attack which actually happens when the user account which is compromised tries to attack and do literal movements that means making himself or herself aware about your enterprise then moving on to the next step compromising a privileged account and then gaining access to sensitive information now all these activities are anomalies right and it's Microsoft Defender for endpoints or Azure ATP is something that will help you getting these things highlighted okay so, so the last recommendation from a zero trust perspective is to make sure you also have implemented Microsoft Defender for endpoints or Azure ATP to understand how behavior analytics work in a nutshell or how these insights can help you relate whether there is any attack uh, that can happen in your enterprise or not okay so these are all typical uh, security aspects that you have to keep in mind and make sure each one of them is implemented okay now there is an official documentation for all these different use cases which are listed here I will be sharing that in the description if possible please go ahead and read that article okay now let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed in this particular video we have discussed about Microsoft zero trust security strategy that means combining the principles of Microsoft zero trust security with the guidelines and the technology or the features so that you can actually implement them to improve the security posture and then we also talked about different security use cases that should exist in your enterprise from an identity perspective okay in the next video I'm going to talk about Microsoft zero trust for endpoints now if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community thank you so much thanks for your time have a great day bye bye